Lanka, who, who, is from, who is the director of Raw Pours, um, and she says this in her bio, I have been in the pet food business for over eight years, and but I have owned pets all my life. Ten years ago, before I set out to get my next dog, I researched the pet food business and thought there has to be a better way to care and feed pets. This led me to creating Raw Pours. Prior to owning Raw Pours, I worked on an accounting, sales and marketing for Australian and New Zealand owned companies, gaining my experience in the market. So with, uh, without further ado, could you pull my pocket pocket to welcome me to Kia ora. Um, did everybody get a pack, a little gift pack? Yeah. So there's some more up here if you thank want you. one. That's fine, thank you. Um, so thank you for having me here today. Um, as um, we just said that I am the director of Raw Pools, so we started this company eight years ago from an idea. Um, and it was all about pet food and what there was on offer and how we thought we could do it better. But what I thought I would do is I'd give you a little bit of background about um, my experience leading up to starting my own business. So um, I was born in Wellington and did my school days in Gisborne and basically left school at 15 with no um, school certificates or anything like that. Uh, but I'd already been working from 13 years old, um, absolutely knew that um, I didn't want to stay in Gisborne. I didn't think there was anything there to, for me on offer. So basically spent the next 25 years roaming around New Zealand, getting my education from the work that I did. Um, my very first job was in a fiberglass factory and I worked there for eight years. And by the time I was 19, I was the foreman over about eight guys who were all older than me. Um, this taught me a lot about um, being very patient with in an all-male industry where I was working at the time and having to be their boss, so I learnt a lot of good lessons at a very young age. Um, from there, I went and worked for the Royal New Zealand Air Force as a finance, civilian finance advisor, which taught me a lot about culture. I didn't know anything about the Air Force, and when I went on to the base, it was like walking into a new city. Um, worked there for close to four years and learnt a lot about structure and um, how the base works as far as, you know, everybody with their, um, you know, with their um, hierarchy at the base and um, was a really good learning experience for me as far as working with a different culture that was instilled into those guys that used to work there. Uh, from there, I had been here in Auckland and then I moved back down to Taupo and I worked for an accountant and that taught me a lot about finance and the ins and outs of IRD. After that, when came back to Auckland, I uh, realised that there was a lot of sales and marketing um, that I was missing in my career, so I came back and worked up here for about another eight years for different companies, New Zealand and Australian owned, and um, dealt with a lot of the big box companies like Bunnings, Mitre 10, Placemakers, which taught me sales and marketing and how to play with the big boys. So while I didn't have any education when I left school, I gained everything through the work that I did um, in the last 25 years, which was great because I got paid for it as well, so it was awesome. Um, in 2010, my husband and I decided to move to Tauranga from Auckland, and while I was down there, well actually when I was in Auckland, we had, got, we had actually got our big dog Diesel, who's a 70 kg Bormastiff, and we had been looking around at what food was available to feed him. The, um, the idea of feeding him a dry food that I didn't understand didn't really sit well with me, so we investigated raw feeding, and straight away I understood it, and I absolutely believe that this is the right thing to do for my dog. Um, when we moved to Tauranga, we decided, well I'd been working there for about three months and left full paid employment and um, I think I left work on a Thursday, three o'clock and Friday morning, six o'clock, I started my new business. We decided to go online and um, eight years ago, nobody in the pet food industry was online. They had websites, but you couldn't buy it online. You had to ring them or try to organise to get the food to you. There was no e-commerce website in New Zealand where you could buy pet food at that point. So we were the first to do that. 
The only reason we did it was because we couldn't afford a retail shop. <laughs> but it actually worked to our advantage because people really understood you know, that they could buy online, we would deliver it, and um, all they'd do was choose what they wanted and it would end up at their door. The whole idea of um, raw pet food is that we wanted to educate other pet food owners about what was available. We understood that there was um, a better option that we could teach people about. And what we also wanted to do was teach them about the benefits of raw feeding and why we chose to do this. Um, naturally, I was going against what a lot of veterinarians were telling clients, but I mean, change doesn't come about by just following everybody else. And that's one of my probably main causes. I've never followed everybody else. If I think there's something to do and we can do it better, then I'll always investigate that and follow it through. In doing that though, like we're now eight years into the business and probably for the first five years, we struggled. We really struggled. Nobody understood the concept. Nobody was really buying online and I didn't have any experience as a vet, so nobody trusted me as such. But then people just started hearing a bit more about it. There's a lot more people talking about it and they have, what we used to tell people was like, go online, investigate for yourself, try it we'll teach you how to do it and you'll see the results yourself. We won't have to tell you any more about it. And that's what started happening. More people started raw feeding, more people started investigating it for themselves and they started seeing the results for themselves as well, which is what we saw when we first started doing it. So they started to jump on board. So starting a new business is really hard, um, especially when it comes to pets. People are very passionate here in New Zealand about their pets and going against basically what a lot of professionals were telling them makes it hardcore when you're trying to start a new business. But we're now in a position where people actually come to us. They look for us to find out what we're doing and why we're doing it. And we advise them what we've done and they go away, they investigate it for themselves and they figure it out. So basically we were going against the grain. So. How I understood it was the majority of pet food in the current market was not always the best options to pet owners. I believed that having an online store that offered delivery to the door is what people would want. I understood that veterinary clinics only promoted dry food. There is one vet, say like in the base of Tauranga, that promotes raw food. The rest of them promote dry food. So she was the same as us, start from the gut, and you won't have any issues with your, just like us as humans, if we're eating properly, uh, we're doing the right things for our bodies, then our bodies won't give away on us. And it's the same things for cats and dogs. I also learnt that to the detriment of our cats and dogs health was being caused by food, medicines and vaccinations. So I knew what I didn't want. I didn't want grain and preservative filled products for my pets. I also knew that people would figure it out also if you gave them all the relevant information and taught them how to raw feed. So with our website, we didn't just have an e-commerce website, we also created an app. And on that app, which is still on there today, people can go in, because they were like, well, how do I raw feed? You know, if it doesn't come out of a packet, how do you do it? So basically, we've got um, our app, you could put your cat's or dog's name in, there's one for cats, one for dogs. You put the dog's name in it, you put their age, and their weight, and what it'll do is it'll come up with calculation what to feed day and night, two meals a day, and the variety of the food that you need to feed to, to get a base um, balanced diet. Once people saw this and saw how easy it was, they jumped on board, it was really good. Okay, some of the facts. Um, a lot of pet owners don't actually know some of these facts, like. For instance, cats are true carnivores, so they should eat meat every day. So these are things that we'll tell pet owners. Um, so to prolong their life, they need to eat the appropriate meat every day. Like us with carbs. Carbs, as we know, well, I do love a good rewana bread, but it's not always something that I should be eating. Um, dogs are more like omnivores. So just to give you an example, if a dog was to eat a rabbit, they would actually eat the gut content as well, and that's how they get their vegetation. And they'd eat the whole thing. They'd eat the head, the fur, everything. 
and every part of that is a part of the meal for them. So it's actually good for their body. Their body consumes it and revitalizes itself. Unfortunately, these days, cats and dogs are dying at a lower rate, lower age now than ever before. So the stats are one in two dogs will die of cancer and one in three cats will die of cancer. Yeah, it's quite shocking. But the only thing is, like cats and dogs, all they do is eat, get vaccinated and medicated. So they don't smoke, they don't drink, you know, they don't do all these things that we can do. So how is it they're now dying of cancer? So this is why we've investigated more into what the food's doing. And there are studies over in Canada where they're doing clear <coughs> studies linking cancer to food, especially with dogs. Um, so and cancer is directly connected to these high death rates and all, like I just said, all pets do is eat, get medicated and vaccinated. So I wanted to change this, which is why we started the company. So the Royal Pool's natural diet for pets. Finding a better product that we could do and do it online and have a delivery service to make it very easy for our clients was the basis of our company. So what we included is diet appropriate food for cats, teaching clients what they don't know, quality products sourced from New Zealand, human grade sources, only the best cuts available, and frozen supply, meaning no preservatives, no additives. What the Raw Paws range doesn't include is grains, preservatives, additives and fillers. So basically, if we're saying we're giving you a product called beef, then it's just beef or um, we have like a chicken and liver mix, so that's chicken with chicken livers, nothing else. Some of the benefits of um, feeding a raw diet for your pets. So a typical thing that we'll hear, say from dog owners, is my dog smells. He smells all the time, I've got to wash him every day or every week, once a week. So we've got, um, We've got uh, two males, two entire males, that live in our house and I don't wash them at all because it's the food, it's the food they're eating, you know. It comes out of your pores. If you eat McDonald's every day, I'm pretty sure you're gonna smell like a fish and chip, <laughs> you know, type thing. It's about the food that you're eating as to what you're, um, what you're sweating, basically. Now, so the samples that you guys got today, so while we were doing raw food, the other thing that I wanted to do was I didn't want to medicate or put anything foreign on my animals as well. So what we created was mahu oils. So um, mahu oils in these packs, we've got a natural flea guard, which you can actually use as a insect repellent on yourself because it's a natural product. The cut aid cream, which is, like I make this cream myself, so it's made from aromatherapy oils. I actually use that as a face cream. If I cut myself or if I've got a rash or anything, I use that on myself as well. And the soap that you've got there, so that's a goat's milk soap that's got aromatherapy oils in it. I use that soap in my shower. So all of these things are natural. I use them on myself and I use them on my pets. Um, from that, we've also created Mahu Skin, which is now a human range and mahu equine, which is a range directly, uh, directed at horses. So we have um, the Baker Forsman team, who uh, some of them, like, there are a couple of guys down in the Waikato that are the top thoroughbred trainers here in New Zealand. They use our cream because it's got no withholding products in it, and it works, and it works really fast. Just going over a little bit more information. So, like I said, we were founded in 2010. Um, we now have seven staff. And my belief was basically, if you can do something better, then do it. <coughs> Don't hold back. That's it. <laughs> Any questions? <laughs> Challenges you face 
facing now um, in terms of some of the, you know, the um, business and the structure and, and how things are going? Um, so, like the the business side of like running our um, our plant, we've got that down to a very fine art. Um, probably, well, what we've done is as we've grown the business, we've looked at some of the challenges. Like people didn't understand the concept of it, and they didn't know how to do it. So. To um, counteract that, we made sure we had the right information on the website. And like, as far as like, so people go, well, my dog's 20 kilos. You know, what do I feed him? How do I feed him a, a balanced diet? So when they use the app, it actually gives them a range of product that over a couple of weeks that would be a balanced diet for them. So it had to take the thinking out of it for them until they kind of got used to it. Because uh, it is, it's quite a scary thing, you know, people are very close to their pets and if they're doing something completely different, they're really hesitant to do it. Mm. We would find people would like look, up, look us up on, webs, on our website probably three and four times before they'd even contact us or, and they'd do quite a bit of research before they'd even come to us simply because we're doing something that's completely opposite to what their vet's doing. But people mm. are starting to understand that sometimes everything that's going mainstream isn't actually the right thing. Mm. And you know, like when we've got, cause like we had no data to support what we were doing, but now my 70 kg bull mastiff dog, who's nearly 10 years old, looks like a five year old. You know, they've got no cancer, they've got nothing, no issues. We don't go to the vets, cause mm. there's no issues with our dogs or our cats. You know, we've got two cats as well. So probably our biggest, challenge was when we started like I was you know yeah everybody's gonna get into it, they're gonna know it and they're gonna get into it and I'm gonna be rich mm -hmm. and five years later you know I had to work um, I think six months into the business I had to go and work at Apita and do night shift uh, 12 hour night shifts uh, my husband was working to support me and and my my brainchild idea <laughs> you know type thing and we really struggled, you know, we, we really struggled to make ends meet, you know, baked beans on toast and, you know, never went out. We had a van called Rattles because that's basically what it did. But now there is a clear movement with pet owners and raw feeding and really starting to understand what's going on with their pets mm -hmm. and we're at the start of it. So, you know, for us, we're at the really good, you know, we're at a really good point with our business now. Thank you. Hmm. Hi. Have you had any like responses from from um, their point of view with what you're doing? Yeah, when I first started the business, I actually went round to all the vets um, in Tauranga and um, quite a few through the Waikato. Told them what I was doing, showed showed them what I was doing, and to them, and like they were just like. Oh, so is this going to be a thing? Is it like they yeah. totally didn't think there was anything that I was doing that was going to affect what they're doing? Um, we've got um, one vet; she's a holistic vet in Tauranga, and she totally understands the idea about feeding the right food for the gut health um, to maintain the health of the animal. So she is in the holistic. Um, veterinary scene as one of the top vets in that area. So um, even I think it was a couple of months ago I actually stopped in a shop, a new shop that opened up in Tauriko and it was a vet and I said to her, oh you know we're quite a well known raw pet food company here, I didn't know whether or not she would want to be stocking our product. Mm. And she goes, oh yeah these trends come and go don't they? <laughs> So even when you mention this movement, it, it's the public that's moving towards yep. you guys. Yeah, it's but the public, yeah. The profession is still, still has not. their own. Yeah, I mean, like, vets yeah. have got a, a prominent like. job to do as far as, you know, a lot of the, you know, um, a lot of the health aspects of the animal is concerned. But unfortunately, the food side is one part that's not really well looked into. Mm. You know, um, People, when you tell people about raw pet food and the benefits of it, they look at you like it's a new thing. You know, they can't, they just, they've never heard it before. But then, you know, like we have a stand at the Tauranga Farmers Market, which is a, um, a registered farmers market, so you have to produce your own product. Mm -hmm. 
And I'll have clients standing here and somebody else with a dog or something will come up and they'll go, oh, what's this? And they'll just start rattling all the benefits that have come about because they've changed their pet's food. Mm -hmm. So it's word of mouth mainly that has got us to where we are now. Yeah, because it, it sounds like that, you know, that would be a, a good research area for the, for the um, um, educators that they teach veterinarians to start looking into this. Definitely, definitely. Just to change some of their philosophies. Yeah, I think so. And I, th you know, there's, and there are, you know, without doubt, there are um, some things that people have to know about raw feeding. Just mm. raw feeding, just meat, is not just the answer. Like with dogs, they actually need a lot of vegetation as well. Um, and we also, in like another area that we've actually just in the last couple of weeks added in is we're adding hemp products into our range because of the vitality yeah. and the, uh, the omegas, threes and sixes. We're and interested in one of our keynote speaker tomorrow. Oh, okay. <laughs> we can take one more question. Hi. So have you, have you um, entered into the research area? Um, because I can see a lot of scope for that. Um, there's, say we've got, you know, an environmental and animal science area mm -hmm. and part of, you know, their specialisation is um, care of animals. Yep. Um, scientists, that kind of thing. Um, also, the gut health area is very interesting, um, yep. just and the parallels between you know the, the gut of the um, animal versus the gut of the, the human, yep. um, and that's a it's actually a, a, a well established and growing area of research in terms of general health, yep. um, and you could leverage off that for animals. You know, yep. sometimes animals inform you know um, health of. In this instance, there's more recognition of gut health and health. Yep. And do you know what I mean? So, no, I haven't looked into any doing any research myself. Obviously, I keep there's a there's a few people that I um, follow from Canada because uh, that's where this main research that we've been following is being based. Where they've gotten dogs with varying um, levels of cancer that they're taking in, and just with a slight change of diet, they're monitoring basically the differences that they're making, whether they're slowing it, stopping it, and or reversing it. So for myself, I haven't, but you know, definitely, I think there's um, there's a lot to be said about it. I think there's you know there's definitely needs to be some research around it. Cool. All right, I'm going to finish it there. If we could just give a final clap to you. Thank you. I'd like to, just to give you a small gift of our appreciation. Oh, thank uh, you. Uh, Panamu earrings are made by our uh, benefit.